So you've got a new Apple Silicon-based Mac and you're ready to do some cool data science. Well, in this tutorial, we're gonna talk about how to install TensorFlow on an Apple Silicon Mac. The first thing to do is to check to make sure that you've got the Xcode command line tools installed. To check if they're installed, you can type Xcode select dash P. If it gives you back a location, they're probably installed. Granted, there might just be an empty folder at that location, but in all likelihood, you've got them installed. You might want to also check the version of your Xcode command line tools. To do that, type clang dash dash version. Looks like I've got 14.00. Just a little aside, you may want to keep your Xcode application in sync with the version of your Xcode command line tools. If you haven't updated your Xcode application in a while, you might want to do that as well. Next step, you want to install Conda. What's the deal with that? Well, Conda is a separate package manager for Python, different from pip. If you know Python, you might be familiar with the pip package manager, but Conda is different. What does differently than pip is that it makes sure not just that you have the latest version of a dependency that's required for a package, but it ensures you have the version that works for a dependency of a package. That way, if you go to upgrade numpy, let's say, uh, you don't end up breaking TensorFlow. So it will keep the packages at the right version they need to be so that everything works. Conda is more than just a package manager. It also manages environments. Are you confused yet? Hang on, there's Anaconda, and that's a complete set of tools that will include Jupyter Notebook as well as the Conda Package Manager and Environment Manager. While at the same time, MiniForge and MiniConda are subsets that only install Conda and its dependencies. Sometimes it's referred to as a bootstrap. Between MiniConda and MiniForge, deciding which one is right is a little bit contentious, and you could find lots of interesting articles saying one or the other. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna install MiniForge. Do you disagree with my choice? Please leave a comment and discuss. So let's install MiniForge. We'll bring up the GitHub page for MiniForge. And I'm gonna make life easy for myself and I'll just install the latest installer with Python 3.9. I know that Python 3.9 works with TensorFlow. This is gonna download the script. There, that's done. So now let's change permissions on the script and run it to install MiniForge. Here it goes. Press enter to continue. Type yes to accept the license. It's going to install it by default to your user's directory. If that's where you want it, go ahead and accept that by pressing enter. And here it goes. Uh, go ahead and run conda init so it will create its environment. Okay, notice how it says for changes to take effect, you need to uh, reopen your current shell. So let's open up a new shell window. There, now it says base. So let's turn off this default environment and create one for TensorFlow. Here it goes. Now Conda's bringing in Python 3.9. Okay, now we'll activate that TensorFlow one. Okay, now we're outside of base and we're in TensorFlow. So here we go. Now we install TensorFlow. So at this point we've installed Python, now we're gonna install TensorFlow. First we're getting the dependencies for TensorFlow. All right, now we install TensorFlow Mac OS. Pip install TensorFlow Mac OS. Downloading. All right, downloading some more. Look at it go. Excellent, all that great open source software. Now let's, let's install TensorFlow Metal. 
So the way that I like to do my data science is in the Jupyter Notebook. So now let's install Jupyter Notebook. Here it goes. All right, now let's try it. And there it is, Jupyter Notebook. All right, excellent.